So this episode of BizJet TV, we're going to be talking about the number one secret to buying a private jet. This is something I've kind of talked about, but today I really want to emphasize this because I think it's really, really important. Now, um, before we start, subscribe to the channel. Lots of information here on private jets. If you're looking to buying a private jet or leasing one or charging one or contemplating uh, what to do or you're just interested in aviation, uh, subscribe to the channel. Lots of information on here and also get yourself a copy of the Quantum Economy, my latest book. The link is below. Lots of information here on how to take your business to the quantum level and the private jet plays a key role in this. So click on the link below, which will take you to uh, Amazon where you can get yourself a copy. It's available worldwide, by the way. So also below, you'll find the link to my newsletter. So let's get into the meat, juice, whatever you want to call it of this episode. And let's answer that question. And let me just talk you through it because I'm going to back what I'm about to say up by some really important research because it's important for you to understand. So the number one secret to buying a private jet is actually not the jet, but guess what? The pilots or the pilot. That's the important thing. So you're saying to me, well, oh, I've been on to avbuyer.com and controller.com. I've seen all these pretty pictures of this Falcon 7X that I want to buy because I like the shape and this and that and the other. And I've read this, that, the other about the airplane. And I can find one for $15 million. There's a guy in Oklahoma that's got one for sale. OK, great. But, you know, bear in mind that when you make that phone call, you are talking to the broker and the broker's paid by the seller and the broker makes a percentage of the sale of the airplane. So he's working for the seller of the aircraft and not for you. So you have to really understand here that you do need an aviation advisor. And that's why I encourage you to reach out to me, ping me a email and I'll schedule you in for a call so we can talk about uh, your private jet strategy, which starts with the pilots. The pilots are really, really important. And when you do business with me, when you hire me as an aviation advisor, I will also find you the right pilots. And I've flown with 65 different nationalities of pilots around the world. I know what a good pilot looks like and I'm going to bring you pilots through my network. I'm not going to advertise. I don't need to. I know what a good pilot looks like and I know what a good pilot will be attracted to. And that's also another important factor. So let's talk, look at the research first and then I go into a few other factors regarding this whole issue of the, the, the pilots versus the plane. So let's look at accidents. So the NTSB, which is the National Transport Safety Board, which goes out there and analyzes accidents, have discovered that 88% of accidents uh, in general aviation, which includes private aviation, are caused by pilot error. Now, when we take that number and we look at the major airlines, that number drops to 50%. So it's still high, between 50 to 88%. Now, uh, next thing we want to look at, if we want to look at when do accidents actually happen, what phase of flight? According to this research that you're seeing here on the screen, most accidents happen either landing or during takeoff. And so what a lot of airlines have done is they've introduced a thing which is called the sterile cockpit procedure. What does that mean? That means under 10,000 feet. So during takeoff, under 10,000 feet, and during landing below 10,000 feet. Basically, the pilots will only talk about that particular flight. So they'll be concentrating on the checklist. They'll be concentrating on air traffic control. They'll be concentrating on bringing that airplane down safely on that flight. So there's no chit chat about the ball game, about, oh, I'm going out with a nice girl tonight, or my daughter's just graduating from high school. There's none of that going on below 10,000 feet. And there's none of this, the boss in the back or the lead passenger coming up front and talking to the pilots or trying to interfere. Or if the boss or passenger is sitting on the jump seat to start talking about what's going on, or the flight attendant coming forward and saying, would you like an orange juice, Captain? None of that happening because the pilot needs to be focused on landing or taking off in this case. Um, and, you know, the pilots will signal to the people in the back um, as the plane is descending. They'll say 10 minutes to landing, which means they're just about to go below 10,000 feet. Or they'll put the seat, or they'll ding dong, the, they'll recycle the seatbelt sign, whatever. But, you know, that will be a briefing that will be done um, before takeoff. So you'll know that, you know, you don't go and disturb the pilots now because they're in that critical phase. So that's really, really important. So uh, next is uh, mechanical failures. And this is important uh, because uh, mechanical failures regularly account for 15% of aircraft accidents. And when you think mechanical failure, you think engine failure, engine failure. Oh, the engines failed. Now we're going to die. But, you know, when we look at mechanical failures, which account for 15% of aircraft accidents, the percentage of those failures are caused by the engine are very, very few. But if you look at pilot training, most of the training is all about the engine fails. Engine fails on takeoff, engine fails on landing. Pilot needs to fly around on one engine, go around on one engine, manage the whole operation on one engine. 
uh, think of fuel cross feeding the fuel and this that the other and all the training is i'd say 80 90 percent of the training particularly in the simulator is all about the um uh, flying around on one engine but when we look at accidents it's very much other reasons why the airplanes crash and so this is why we need to build into scenario based training where we need to look at scenarios and this is really important i'll go into that in in a little bit more let's continue on uh, the whole accident thing let's look at the engine failures when the engine fails why does an engine quit number one reason is fuel it's one of the reasons uh, either you know contaminated fuel not enough fuel fuel starvation for some reason um it's one of them structural failure that could be caused by bird strike mechanical failure um icing is another one and also failure to replace spare parts uh, sorry failure to replace certain parts that can be prevented by doing a periodical boroscopic checks on the engines boroscopic check sends a boroscope into the engine looks at any wear and tear anything that's happening inside the engine and say oh we need to change this particular part because it looks like it's going to fail in the next six to eight months or next hundred hours or whatever so praying the preventative game can really help a lot of these things from happening so let's go back to the pilots and the training so first of all you want to attract the right type of pilot and today with the pilot shortage out there the first thing you do to attract the right pilot is pay them a ton of money so we're looking about two hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year for your you know your lead captain and the next and, and the other captain is probably going to be played close to that you need to throw in health insurance and a number of other benefits if you're going to fly about 200 hours a year two pilots is enough but these guys will want time off as well they have life outside you know flying you around um so that's important so sometimes it's a good idea to hire a third pilot or maybe even four pilots do you need a flight attendant that will depend on the size of the cabin of the aircraft um, it's always recommended to do so if you have a certain size cabin because the flight attendant will look after the people in the cabin and it's not just about serving you nice food and drink it's also about being there and first aid trained if somebody suddenly is ill the flight attendant will be able to look after you and you know give you oxygen or get the defibrillator working you know anything like that will give you medicine or bandage or whatever last thing you want is to sort of disturb the pilots also oh, and so is not well at the back whatever you know the pilots need to be focused on flying the plane this is why i always encourage if you do have a particular uh, larger aircraft you're flying long legs and uh, you really do want someone in the in the back looking after you and and the number one reason is safety so that's really really important uh, to do that now regarding the pilot training now pilots usually go for training on the private jet world once a year in the simulator the airlines do it twice a year um there's a bit of ground school down there there's a bit of uh flight training in the simulator but as i said before it's all based on losing an engine so we need to design some scenario based training uh based on scenarios that have happened on that particular aircraft so you need to talk to your lead pilot and say look what's the minimum budget required for training and let's say it's a hundred thousand dollars for two pilots okay we're going to double that we're going to actually we're going to make it two hundred and fifty thousand because the other part of training which is very important to do these days is upset recovery training which you can do some in the simulator but i would encourage doing that at least once a year in the airplane and so you need to budget for that as well so i would definitely increase your budget for training this is really really important so these are the things you need to look at um when you're buying your airplane and also the other thing is when you're buying your airplane is is okay this is older technology uh Am I going to attract a pilot that's going to stay or is he going to be enticed to go and fly more of a modern airplane? Now, that will depend on how long you're going to keep the airplane. You say to the pilot, look, we're, we're buying this plane now. We're going to fly it a couple of years. Then we're going to move on to something you know, bigger and better and more technologically advanced. So that guy's motivated to stay with you. This is all very, very important that you have that dialogue. Your lead pilot or chief pilot will also look after the maintenance. So he'll schedule the maintenance. Again, you want to budget for that and you want to budget to do preventative maintenance as well. Um, and you know so you want to increase that budget you know you're buying an airplane you need to run this thing professionally you don't want to try and go on the cheap now what happens if you are the pilot what happens if you decide I'm going to buy my own plane and fly it myself well a lot of these rules apply uh, you need to make sure you're doing more training that you're focused maybe sometimes you take a professional pilot with you to look after you and watch how you're doing if we look at for example what John Travolta does John Travolta always has a, he has a team of professional pilots that work with him and look after him he does landings and takeoffs sometimes sometimes he just sits in the back but these guys look after everything because let's face it if you're building a business your primary focus is building your business now you you enjoy flying now and again great fly on the weekends 
fly now and again take a professional pilot with you or if you are going to fly yourself you need to put that pilot hat on which means you need to be doing the training be doing extra training uh, the maintenance needs to be looked after maybe you have a maintenance organization do that for you uh, but you need a budget and time and money for your own training that's really really important but you know if you grab yourself a copy of the quantum economy you can find out about that in my book you can click on the link below for that and also I encourage you to reach out to me uh, book yourself in ping me an email let's do a strategy call and sort of design this whole thing for you as I said you know I've worked with pilots from all over the world I have a network which covers the whole globe um, and uh, you know I'll find you a good pilot or a, a group of pilots and even flight attendants which will look after you with your airplane and that's really really an important aspect you know when we're looking at choosing an airplane okay is it going to be easy to find pilots to fly this airplane and don't get focused on oh I need a tight rated pilot for that airplane because you can take a guy that's flown a different number of airplanes and just send them to flight school to learn to fly that particular airplane bring in an expert on the airplane for three or four weeks to train your guy and off you go and that pilot will be really happy to get a qualification on your new airplane but you've got the right person you've got someone that's really really professional knows what they're doing but again you're a business person you don't know how to recognize a good pilot from a bad pilot this is where I come into it this is where I can really help you to you know uh, find the right the right pilot for you because it's far more important to find the right pilots more than the airplane because they will manage the plane for you and make sure it's safe and this is something that you know not a lot of people look into but it's so, so important to do this. So I hope you enjoyed this episode of BizJet TV. Subscribe to the channel. Get yourself a copy of The Quantum Economy. Ping me an email. Let's get on a one-to-one -one call. Let's talk about your strategy. And also below you'll find a, a, a link there which will take you to be able to subscribe to my weekly newsletter where there's a lot of information on, uh, on in the newsletter as well. But more than anything, let's get on a one-to-one -one call. Let's design a strategy for you keep you safe, get you the right private jet, but get you the right pilots to manage the jet and fly the jet for you. Fly around safely because really today, flying with a pri by private jet is going to really make your business grow quantumly, not in a linear fashion, in a quantum fashion. And that's really, really important. So I hope you enjoyed the episode. Give us a thumbs up, comment below. Love to hear your comments. Let's get the chit chat going here. Um, subscribe, share this video with friends and family and check out this other video I did recently about pay your pilots to say no this is another really important thing and check out the playlist of interviews that i've done with a number of private jet owners why they bought their jet and more importantly how they use their jet to bring their business into the quantum economy as it's mentioned in my book and that's all from fabrizio Pauli here on budget tv and i'll see you on the next one